What is going on? We are live. I see James uh, Williford. Williford is uh, heading out to his shop for some inspiration. Awesome. Uh, what's going on, guys? It's Adam Henkel here with the Makers Mob and Nathan Fought <clears throat> all the way out in Pennsylvania. Say hello, Nathan. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to the live. If you guys can hear us perfectly fine, let us know in the chat. Uh, what's going on, Kevin? Let us know uh, where you're tuning in from. Nathan, why don't you chat a little more, talk a little more. Uh, see Hi, everybody. Make uh, sure. Is that our our common Kevin, the one that's always here? That's Kevin, yeah. He yeah, was like the Kevin. Like there's like one known Kevin. Kevin McCann, he's actually yes. he's he's in the province I'm Yeah, like uh, twenty I'm minutes in. from you or something. No, not that close. <laughs> not that well, close. I thought it's like Europe where everything's like five minutes away. No, and BC is huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah. We're we're massive. Like to drive so I'm on an island and to drive yeah. uh the distance of the island from south uh to north. I think is like six to six hours, eight hours, or something like Jeez. that. Like, yeah, it's that's it's not an island. That's a continent. It's I think it's <laughs> twice twice the size of Japan. Yeah, and, it's gonna and we're on the and we're a small island on the coast of British Columbia. Like, okay, we're, we're huge. I'll say this: when driving from like the tip of uh of uh Florida, like we yeah. all know how long Florida is. Yeah. So from the top of Florida all the way down to the Florida Keys is is. And that's so long. That's the biggest state I've ever like had to travel through. That's yeah. nine hours. So yeah. if you're six hours, that's like almost as big as Florida. So yeah. that should just be like a whole continent. <laughs> yeah, we're Hi, huge. Hi, Kevin. Glad to see you here. We're huge. Uh, what's going on, everybody? We got uh, San Francisco in the house. We got Nova Scotia. Larry, welcome. Daniel from Collinwood. We got Kath here, as always, from Edinburgh, awesome. Scotland. So New Jersey in the house, Florida, Valley, Green Valley Lake, California, Texas, the country of Texas. Uh, uh, my sister actually lives out in Oklahoma. And just moments before this, she told me uh, they were just like attacked by a hailstorm. So whoever's oh, wow. in Texas, I hope you're uh, you didn't get nailed with the uh, hailstorm too. Puerto Rico in the house, Delaware? Question mark. <laughs> I do not know where you are, Joseph. I mean. Uh, <laughs> well, Delaware's kind of small, so I think if you just say Delaware, like covers no, the he, whole state. But he's got a question mark. It's Delaware oh. question mark. I don't know. Delaware, maybe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he's trying to figure out where he is. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you joining us today who haven't been here, uh, this is the third week um, that we are going through the building a legacy workbench. Uh, here, this is with Nathan thought. Uh, thought Nathan fought. Uh, a Maker's Mob member for a long time. And we're just kind of talking all about his experience building the Samurai Workbench, uh, which is live inside the Maker's Mob as far as a tutorial series and plans. Um, so Nathan built this, uh, was it a year ago again? Is that yep, what it was? Yeah, a year, year ago is when I finished. A year and a half ago I finished it. Yeah, so Nathan's just kind of walking through his experience. Um, you know, we started off first week talking about his inspiration. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about the milling process. And then we talked last week about the joinery and assembly. And then today we're going to talk more about the hardware, different uh, things that he's he's bought as like kind of attachments, uh, <laughs> yep. extra hardware pieces, um, kind of the final touches. And then we have a special treat in a little bit. The Samurai Carpenter will be joining us live here. Um, so that's exciting. That's coming up in just a little bit. Before so should, we Did I have to take down my like a full size body poster of Jesse? Oh, do you have one of like a pinup? <laughs> yeah, I have a pinup of Jesse. Oh, <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Just no, kidding. Leave, leave that there. <laughs> uh, if you guys do want to see part one and part two, you can find that either on our Makers Mob Facebook page, it's somewhere on there, or uh, even on the face or the Makers Mob YouTube channel, which is just a small channel that we're just starting to use for these lives. Uh, you can find it on there. I think it's literally only these three videos that is on the channel so far. So, yes. um, yeah. Uh, so before we get into it, though, uh, I've got some slides with our beautiful faces on it. Uh, we you can't are have a better slide than that. I know it's pretty nice, it's gorgeous. Uh, we're gonna just quickly touch on uh, some exciting stuff up in the Maker's Mob. Uh, 
good that's going on right now and then we're going to get into the whole thing so um let me make sure my slide works uh so yes we're talking about this is the workbench that we're talking about if you haven't been been here it's a beauty this is nathan's workbench mm -hmm. we're going to talk all about the hardware the dog hole layout um and the way that he did that and kind of just the kind of ins and out of that and then as far yeah. as the extra bits of hardware that he's he's got as attachments or things that he uses on the bench and then the samurai will join us so uh what we do have going on is we've launched new makers mob lives that are happening every thursday inside the makers mob uh with makers like these guys here that's uh chris from third coast craftsman uh we've got uh cam from blacktail studio jimmy Duresta, john peters uh the samurai carpenter uh, every Thursday, one of those makers is going to be live uh, with myself and potentially some other guys here at the Makers Mob that we're just going to be talking shop, talking about what they got going on, projects they're working on, and also breaking down stuff and learning and doing some shop stuff as well. So uh, this Thursday inside the Makers Mob, Cam's going to be breaking down that live edge uh, epoxy river table. Um, the build that he he built that table there. He's going to talk all through that process. If you're looking at doing a project like that, uh, the following week, Chris from Third Coast Craftsman is going to be talking all about his new shop and setting that up and building his dream shop and kind of his his kind of mentality in how he designed it and the things that he loves. Maybe things that he would change uh, if he were to do it again. So that's something to look forward. And that is for members only inside the Makers Mob. If you're not a member. Uh, we are having a another webinar deal that we're throwing out. It's the same one as last week um, for $4.95 for your first month. You're going to get all the lives, all the challenges we have, which is the six-week joinery challenge we've got in there that you can still participate in. It's over, but you can still take the, the class. Uh, over 75 original project plans, 80 in-depth tutorials, the community, Facebook group, all the monthly contests and prizes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so for 75% off the first month, $4.95, you can get that right now. Click the link in the description, either on YouTube or in Facebook, if you're on Facebook. All right, we got through that. <clears throat> got to get that out of the way. And uh, and now we're going to show you off. This is Doug, Ooh, actually. Wow. This is the winner from last month's Project of the Month contest for our members. Um, and I'm talking to Doug. I was talking to him today, just texting him. And... I'm hoping that he's going to be able to come live next week, Tuesday, to talk about this, this as well as some of his other recent projects. Um, and we'll do that next Tuesday as well. So next Tuesday, we are going to be going live again. Uh, so you can join us here same time next Tuesday. Uh, and we're going to be talking about different projects and different things. Uh, hoping it's Doug. Crossing my fingers that it's Doug <laughs> and we're going to talk about this. Uh, we also gave away this week in the Makers Mob a for the winner of the six week joinery challenge we gave away a lifetime membership a lee nielsen low, low angle rabbiting block plane and a uh, a t-shirt and that was to that's not doug why does it say doug that was to jerry uh what was jerry something i don't know why i put doug on there but that's jerry's work right there so great job jerry good job jerry <laughs> doug you get all the credit yeah. uh some other projects that came out of the six week joinery challenge uh that's mike he, awesome he, he did his his joints there which he's actually missing one of the joints but fantastic there's there. doug's there's doug's actual side table awesome. he built and kevin you got awesome. yours on there too Kevin's looked beautiful with that uh, curly, I think, maple, I think you said it was, what on it top. Like, yeah. It was beautiful. So anyways, I thought we'd show show off some of those some of those pieces and highlight those guys. Uh, that's some work inside the Makers Mob and the six-week joinery challenge. This is the final project uh, through that, that joinery challenge, which we had a bunch of people do. Um, so anyways, that's out of the way. If you guys want to get in on the Makers Mob and get in on those lives and all that stuff, hit that hit that link and sign up for the the deal that we got going on right now um and uh yeah i'll remind you at the end of this but for now nathan let's get going uh i'm talking talking yeah. shop yeah shop talk um so this is the end product we talked all about you know nathan milled up took like took these trees that he he had gotten for free yeah and uh figured out how to get them to a mill and mill them up, gave the guy half the, the lumber. He took the other half, uh, 
got this stuff to his shop. Last week, he talked all about kind of the process of joinery. Like I said, go watch part two if you if you haven't seen that. Uh, we've assembled it. He showed us some tips, mm -hmm. like the sled sled tip with the 35-degree uh, angle for those uh, pyramid Terrible. ends, yeah. ends on the pegs. Uh, and that whole process, the triple through tenon, we talked about that and his tips on that, the assembly. And now we're getting into the dog holes and kind of that. So my question is, you built this bench, Nathan, yeah. and you've got this, the, you got to drill holes in it now. <clears throat> oh, it's so scary. Like if the glue up portion wasn't stressful enough, this is like a little bit more because now you're like, oh, hey, I've put a finish and everything on this now. Like. If I screw it up, you're like, you're at the very last part of it. So walk me through your process with this. Like, okay, how did you know? Uh, so did, like Jesse's plans, they, mm -hmm. they show you the spacing for everything? No. Uh, no. If I remember correctly, I don't believe he put the spacing on okay. it. So and if he did, he did. He like made some suggestions that he would uh, change it up a little bit. Okay. So how did you come up with your spacing? And uh, I mean, it looks like you've made this jig. You've actually got like yep. a stop that you've attached to it on the end there uh, yep. that's registering on the side. Yep. And tell me, how did you come up with that spacing? Would you do the same spacing? Have you found that that is working out for you? Um, I did, uh, I think I want to say- well, It looks eight, like eight inches. Eight inches, yeah. I think is what it was. Um, cause I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my bench, uh, as, <laughs> as the holes are right in front of me. I so see on the picture eight inches there. So, uh, yeah, on there, what I did is I, I figured out where I wanted the dog holes to be, um, by not registering them in a crack along the, uh, the boards, the laminated okay, boards. The lamination. So gotcha. I didn't want to, uh, have that just be like where a glue line was. Yeah. Um, maybe that's just my OCD, but I just, I wanted to make sure that it was going to be functional and also not cause like a splitting kind of action later on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I laid it out with that in mind. I did happen to make a couple boo-boos, even though I tried to avoid it as very much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but in the most part, I'm, I'm very happy with how I laid them out. Most of the boo-boos were because of where the vice hardware hit oh, on okay. the uh, twin square, square uh, or twin screw uh, vices. So is that the holes in the, in the actual vice, like the stock yep. on the vice head? Yep. So let me see if I can kind of show you this a little bit here. So, okay. This here is where the vice lines up. And there's a rod that goes all the way into here. And just in this hole, am I even pointing the camera right? So yep. even in this hole here. Hold on, I'm gonna bring you up big screen there. Okay. Uh, actually, I can't. Oh yes. no, yeah, here I can do this. There. Okay, wonderful. So in this hole here that lines up with this vise, even though it's offset, there's a big square plate that is the backer to that uh, rod that screws through. It's basically uh, okay. the, the female end of the threads. And it hits the corner of that by just a hair. And so I missed that one as well as on the same vise. I have a couple dog holes in here. And there's two like metal rods yeah. that stick out. So that yeah. way you're – it just elevates your workpiece above the threaded rods. So that way yeah. as you're spinning, you're not like threading the oil and rods on the wood. So yeah. you're not damaging it. Well, yeah. that one pin ended up being right in the way. So, <laughs> no. And I was like, okay, great. I could just pull it out and end up like shifting it over a little bit. Cause I was yeah. going to put a, um, leather leather over top of it so yeah i'll just cover the hole no big deal well then it got like wedge slash stuck in there and no matter what i i couldn't pull that piece out so they're just the two flaws i have in my system but other than that i'm very happy with how the uh all the dog holes laid out okay and then so quickly tell me uh the vices you used was it the same ones that the samurai yep, used the his? veritas twin screw uh Twin screw, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know what the rest of the word name just, is for it. The twin screw vice. Yeah, I think it's just twin yeah. screw vice. Um, tell me, uh, I see Jesse's show showed up in our kind of our off off camera mm -hmm. thing here, so we can pull him up in just a second. Okay. But um, tell me about these attachments that you've got. You got these nice okay. uh, these pucks from Rockler here. Yeah. So, so I I have a lot of bench accessories. Is kind of what I call them. Just yeah. basically uh secondary tools to the bench which are designed for work holding yeah. um because that's basically what what all the dog holes and everything about this bench is the bench is mostly designed for work holding so it's not moving your work piece isn't moving around on you as you're trying to like cut plane do whatever so these here are rockler bench cookies um these things are fantastic i love these and I just maybe like six months ago started realizing I've had some of them, but I got these like uh, spacers that kind of raise it up off the bench. Cause every now and then, like, even though there's a uh, padding and it's kind of grippy, mm -hmm. it would kind of walk. If you're sanding, say like a cutting board, it would start like kind of moving on you a little bit. Just yeah. if like your cutting board was slightly not flat, whatever the issue was. Mm -hmm. So these have like this dog hole uh, part that you can put in your uh, bench the dog and it actually raises it up a bit. So your work piece, let me do this real quick. You could take your work piece and it's now elevated. Nice. And I think that's awesome because say you have like a jigsaw um, that you have to like, uh, saw something around the corners or a router. It just gets it up off the workbench a little bit more. And I think I, I actually love it. Those nice. cookies a lot. And I recommend them to anybody. Even if you don't have like a samurai workbench and you just have a regular workbench, they're fantastic for sanding. Awesome. I'm actually going to bring Jesse on and we're just, okay. we'll, we've got a couple more uh, slides. Actually, I don't know if I can bring him on and show the slides. Let's just pound through these. Okay. We'll um, go quick. Actually, you do have those the stuff there with you, right? Yes. Yep. Let's just quickly look at quickly this. What you, explain to me what this is, and then we'll pull Jesse on. Okay. So these are uh, a couple different uh, uh, bench dogs, and so the brass pieces are bench dogs that kind of just hold the piece together, or holds the piece as like a stop lock mm -hmm. on your bench, and those are very toss, uh, very thin, same concept piece. Uh, so like say you're hand planing, they stop the work piece and you don't necessarily have to clamp it. You can just like your pressure holds it yeah. in place. It, they work great. So I love doing that for certain applications. And then the other ones are these guys here. Uh, I have two different styles of these. So one is just kind of the brute force manual, whack it with a hammer and it kind of mm -hmm. wedges itself in. And the other one that I have is this Veritas screw where you basically screw it and it holds down as the screw goes. And the reason I got those ones is for when my kids are sleeping at night and my wife doesn't want me hammering I mean, and pounding. They're basically my hand tool yeah. <laughs> operation. Awesome. And then we got, that's it for that. So yep. I'm going to bring Jesse on and let's talk about, let's see if, if you have a question for him. Maybe mm -hmm. about the bench, then you can ask him and, and we'll, we'll just love chat to. for a bit. Um, let me see. Let me get him here. Hey, there he is. What's hey, up? Hey, now it's a party. Look hey. at this guy. Oh, I'm big. I don't want to be big. I want you guys. How do we do this? Oh, we so totally should have put the hey, there we go. Look at that. We're all cool. Look at this. Hey. Hi, buddy. How's it going, Nathan? It's living the dream. Living yeah, the good. Dream. Good to finally meet face to face. I guess this. You is... know what? This might be our first face to face. Dude, yeah, I think it is. So. It's a big That's moment. Awesome. I'm gonna have to write it in my diary. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> An exclamation! Extra yep. exclamation point. Yep, with like a star stickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Nathan, Nathan, Jesse, Nathan had a question for you about uh, the the vice, the Veritas vice something yeah, that he's he's dealt with so go ahead nathan okay so i love these vices and i hate them at the same time i know Dude. They're, they're a little bit finicky yeah yeah do you have any pointers for keeping my problem i have is i think the chain is just like a hair uh where the 
rods mount in are just like a hair one side or the other, meaning that the chain is slightly too loose or too tight if I use a half uh, chain link or not. So yeah. basically my issue is they keep jumping the uh, bicycle rod, I guess, spindle. Yeah, I haven't had, I don't know I haven't had that issue. Did you put that little pin in that's supposed to like kind of lift yeah. the slack up or whatever? Yeah. I, I, my uh, father-in-law, he used to do a lot with uh, these kind of uh, chain-driven gears. And he says uh, an idler is what I need to install. It's just one of those things that... One day he's going to come over and give me a hand doing it, and we're going to work on that together. But it's basically like a a part that would like go in the middle where that little tube is that you were talking about. Yeah. And the uh, idler can go up or down by adjustment, so it can adjust the tension just right. Whereas okay. that pin just kind of sits in there. Yeah, I haven't had I haven't had a jump a like a sprocket or anything like that, but I have like uh, the little set screws on the handle. Okay. I you know like you know how you yeah. turn and the handles are supposed to kind of go around at the same yeah. time. I find like one like when you reef down on one, <laughs> yeah. it kind of it slips a little bit. Like yeah. it still tightens, but like just that little grub screw is kind of. So I've yeah. had to like pull off the face and kind of reset that and crank it down, but I yeah. haven't I haven't had the chain like jump off or or move on me. It's just mainly like the handle tension Adjust, and al yeah. alignment on the handles has been a bit off. But yeah, I've had that, and a lot of it is due to my chain jumping and just like you said, the tension on one side versus the other. So what I actually did is where it uh, you can do you like a half a turn that little like set pin that you can adjust to one side yeah. uh, to, to do like an angled piece. I actually just adjusted that to match the yeah, I've had current, to do that too, the current little, chain the tilt, that is yeah. sitting. Yeah. So that's gone right now. That's actually, it's kind of a little bit offset, but that's uh, how it, it works. So I might, I probably would have more issues. I, I probably, you probably use your vices more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like just I, one. I, I use yeah, I use my end vice the most, and yeah. um, the one on the end of the bench. I use that one probably the most, but typically, like most of my work is is just with the hold fasts. Yeah, you know, like when I'm the, doing mortises and stuff like that. I I don't do a lot of dovetails or like kind of you know that kind of joinery, which then I would probably use the vices a lot more. But just you know, yeah. template work and stuff like that. The hold fasts tend to work really well for me, so that's probably like. I'd say eighty percent of my work is just with on top of the bench with the hold fast. So right, I'll show you the reason why I can't uh, use my vice. There oh, is a motorcycle in the way. My motorcycle me. literally sits inches away, so that makes that challenging. But this guy is the workhorse. It gets all the abuse for for uh, vice wise goes. But one thing I decided that when I go to make my second bench. Because this bench is for my son. Uh, him and I built this together. So now that I have a daughter, I'm a little behind the eight ball on getting that one going. But I have wood already dry. Air dry. How old is your son? He is four. So basically, <laughs> him and I built this together. It was like yeah. months after. Look at look at look at Jesse. We've got. Yeah. I might even have. You have to go back to like the. Oh no! Pictures. I didn't put the picture on there. I can actually pull that up while we chat here. Uh, yeah. There's a picture of him inspecting the bench at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's the the, awesome. the sole proprietor of this bench. Uh, someday when he comes to, uh, kind of like how you're talking in your videos about like the how this bench is for your children. And it is. That, but honestly, that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying he's getting it anytime soon, but it's going to be what he learns to. Uh, how to word work on and I have tons of videos or photos that I plan on like putting in like a little book, like one of those shutterfly books or whatever. And yeah. Have it all printed and someday be here, dude, this is yours now. And when he buys, when he buys his first house or whatever, yeah, has exactly. a garage, then you'd be exactly. like, okay, now you can take now it. <laughs> you get that. Cause then I have my backup. It'll be, I'll be using my daughters at that time. Yeah. And then when, so when it's uh, time for her to go, then, at that point, I'll be old and I'll probably have a lot more skills and do like a Don Bean uh, kind of bench or something like that. <laughs> See, Jesse, they that's his that's his yep. boy there sitting on right the there. on Dude. the tree. 
Yeah. You you live in like hardwood heaven over there, right? Eh? Cody Cody and I or not Cody. Um, who was it? Someone and I was just talking about how he could take a do you know that you live like in like the central hardwood heart of like the US? And I'm like, yeah, like the river I grew up on and like I was basically born on, like the river was utilized as a uh, transportation system for the logging. Yeah. Because we still have the, the cribs with the chains and everything set up in our river where the logs would be sectioned into yeah. different directions. Sweet. So Jesse, I, I live in like the softwood <laughs> yeah, capital right. like yeah. where we got cedar and fir and spruce and yeah. all the all the softwoods is plentiful, but uh, yeah. hardwood not so much. Um, I have I have two questions. One for Jesse. Jesse, how when you see someone like Nathan build your workbench, how does that? make you feel like when you look at this like do you is there some nostalgia of you like remembering back when you were in the shop building it yourself and designing it or is it meaningless <laughs> are you are you sitting there and being like oh Maybe i don't, I don't work, are you I like miss doing that are part. you like you're not doing a good enough job or are you like are you impressed when guys like Nathan? No, it's pretty impressive, off? especially like considering, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, obviously guys like Nathan have been into woodworking mm -hmm. longer than I've been around, but I was obviously some sort of inspiration to, to him to take it up a level, which is cool. And then seeing, you know, seeing the workbench is, is definitely impressive because I know how much work it was to build the flipping thing and it's right. it's no <laughs> small undertaking not financially or you know the labor wise so you know to see guys pull it off you kind of go oh man that's some commitment there for sure we're not just building yeah. a bar stool you know that's that's a pretty significant build so you know it's definitely cool to see other guys that it's just like okay there's other guys out there that are committed you know to to doing this, building their skills, and they want you know to have similar kind of heirloom type furniture in in their life, and so you know it's it's encouraging for me. Let's just say that, like you know, I feel like a bit of a duck out of water um, amongst a lot of my friends here, you know, who are not necessarily into woodworking or give two mm -hmm. shits about it. Kind of in they the just say, like, hey, they're like, yeah. oh, that looks great, yeah, that looks cool. Great. But yeah. they're like, well, yeah, no, okay. Conversation you want to go watch you... a Netflix? Exactly. And I'm just like, okay, you know. 100%. Same. Yeah, and so it's like that. It's cool to just be like, okay, there's other dudes that are like geeking out and yeah. are really into this. Like they, their space and their garage is their little – you know, happy place, you know? And so mm -hmm. it's cool. I, d I don't feel like such a weirdo. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yes, there's more people like me. They're out yeah. there somewhere. I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I, I look at a piece of wood or a slab and I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. And my wife is just like, okay, it's a piece of wood. Good job. <laughs> you want a cookie? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> What kind? What kind and of let me buy that piece of wood. <laughs> awesome. So then my next question, question number two for both of you. Um, okay. Let's let Nathan answer first. Your first major gouge in the bench, how did that feel? Was it stressful uh, or was it like not a big deal at all? So, okay. So I've made like uh, some dents and stuff like that. And I was, I was totally, totally okay with it. And everyone's like, Oh, your bench is too beautiful to use. Or why'd you use such beautiful wood for a wood bench? And I'm like, well, I totally plan on using this. I built it to be used. Like every dent and scratch is going to be like part of its story. The one thing I was not happy about is when my sander shut off on me and I sat it down and went and go plug it back in because it came unplugged and I forgot to hit the off button. So when <laughs> I plug it back in, it's across the workbench. So I have all these like sanding dents that don't look like a normal wear and tear kind of thing. Uh -huh. And that you're just like, no. <laughs> so like I have like a spot that's like gouged out like a quarter of an inch or so just from it sitting there and rotating. Oh, and no. Like, so I tried putting finish on it, but you know what it's like trying to add a finish uh, to something on top of like a mistake like that. It still yeah. stands out. Yeah. But it is, it's part of the story and learning curve for me. Yeah. What about you, Jesse? 
Um, yeah, I, I don't care about the dents per se. Like at first, I was putting like a piece of wood underneath when I would like chisel through mm -hmm. something because I was like, oh, you know, a dent is fine, but I don't want chisel stabs into the wood. But now I'm just like, I don't even give a crap about yeah. that. <laughs> um, the one thing that did piss me off though was um, one of my uh, one of my nephews was in the shop and like. I was, you know, they were just watching me work or the, mm -hmm. I was doing something and they were kind of standing by the bench and like I came over and one of them had taken one of my Japanese saws and like cut into the corner of my bench, like just, just kind of like testing yeah. the saw on the, on the top corner of my bench and like yeah. made like two curves kind of, you know, really thin yeah. curves, like little yeah. Dazuki saw, but like, you know, three eighths of an inch. Yeah, into, into the that. corner, right? Where it's like that saw curve, like, sure, I could put some glue and sawdust yeah. and it would kind of go I'm... away. But I was like, <laughs> I was yeah. like, at that moment, I thought You're about like, hurting, hurting a child for the first time in my life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I immediately, like, just looked at him deadpan and I was like, you have lost your privileges to be in my shop. I was like, get out. Like, see yeah. you later. And he was I'm... just kind of, like, sheepishly, like, oh. Okay. <laughs> but... I don't want to name names, but considering three of my sons are your nephews, your nephew. <laughs> I am curious to know which one it is, but don't say it. It was on court. It was on Courtney's side. Yes, not my boys. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's. Funny. I think. I think your boys know better. They're not quite. I would uh, hope so. <laughs> yeah. That's I would a... hope so. <laughs> now, Jesse, watch. Adam's gonna tell him. Tell his boys to go over there and just take a little like hammer. Just no. Like, Ding, just no. to get a rise out of you. Would not one, of, one, one of my hard, uh, another hard one was like when I just finished the stool, the matching stool to go with the bench. Yeah. And like probably like three days after I was done, uh, Logan, my boy, took a square faced hammer and just like <laughs> whack the top of it like 10 <laughs> times. So there's always like corner, you know, like 90 degree, like dents like hammer dents yeah. in the top in the top of it and i was like yeah i could probably like scrape off the finish and steam it out mm -hmm. and re-sand it but i was just like oh, it's, not, wor yeah, it's just, not really worth it and, worth it I but every time i look at my stool and i still see those dents i'm just kind of like oh yeah why, <laughs> why, why? that's um, great <laughs> we got uh what time have we got here we got, a few, we got yeah we got few minutes if anybody out there watching has a question uh for either jesse or nathan about his build or whatever um put it in the chat we'll take like one or two questions before we we log off here um but yeah jesse what what do you have going on i know you you, you shared something in our uh, makers mob members only thing that was exciting news i don't know if you want to share that here or tell kind of bit what's going on where, where are we live here are we on we're live on the Makers Mob YouTube. We're live on a bunch of different Facebook groups. The and teaching series. It's it's public. It's a public uh, free live. So this is not members. Some Except members. for me, I'm a member. He's a member, and there are some members in the chat. But yeah, yeah. Well, I am going to be releasing a video hopefully in like a week or two with a really big announcement, but I don't know if I want to make it here just yet. Okay. Until we have everything hundred percent finalized, kind of with what's going on. But it's a a big. Let's just say it's a a a new chapter in the samurai life the samurai clan and so we're um we're pretty excited about it and i think a lot of people watching will also be excited about it that's so. awesome i'm uh, excited i know <laughs> and i'm excited so that's because you wanna you're a know, member yeah if you want to know go be a member <laughs> yeah. sign up. Right. i know and i'm pretty darn excited about it <laughs> oh by the way my wife gave me permission um for your future stuff to come on up uh i have permission from the wife so Oh, oh nice. that's a potential uh, thing. You might meet me more face just, to face. We just need the border to open up. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Literally, I, I literally told her, I was like, she, she goes, why don't you go like uh, do something with Jesse or go travel over there? And I'm like, well, I want to, but I can't get across. I'm not that essential. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. My gosh. Hopefully we will get our uh, stuff figured out over here in Canada yeah. and be able to open the border and, yeah. you know, 
another year or something maybe i don't know i have yeah. no idea at this point within the next decade yeah. i have yeah. family just north of the border up uh um in fort erie canada which is just outside niagara falls right. and yeah. ontario yeah so me being a pa i'm a few hours away from them and i lived in sarnia when i was a little baby oh really yeah nice so i can't wait to get up there and meet them or not meet them but visit them i try to go up like once every year every two years or so and it's now pushing about three years yeah yeah, yeah we're we're pretty frustrated with the whole border situation as well because courtney's yeah. from seattle and so we typically go down yeah. to visit her family did you uh times get through year. the border with uh um the issues that you guys had earlier. Yeah, yeah, we were able to get across without. Because I wondered trouble. about that. But it was it was a, a bit of a mountain to climb for sure. But we we did it. So I'm glad. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple questions here. Just basic questions. Awesome. Jesse for the dog holes. Uh, just confirming the diameter. The three quarter inch. Yeah. Bench. Yeah, so I think the Gramercy tools, like they're the ones from Lee Valley, those hold fast. They're designed to fit into a three quarter inch hole, so they're a tiny bit yeah. smaller, so that okay. they just slide right in. Um, but yeah, it's I haven't had any issues with mine stretching out. Like they still seem to work. Some people say like the dog holes will stretch out over time, but I'm like, I think it's a long time. Yeah. So yeah, just a straight three quarter inch hole. And I used, I think I bought one of those cheap little drill guides to, um, to drill it through kind of straight. Not that it, I don't know. You would have to drill it pretty crooked for it not to function properly. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't stress too much about like making, super precision holes but another thing you could do is just like drill a block of wood that's maybe like two or three inches like on a drill press mm -hmm. and then like take that and like clamp it to the bench to like guide the drill bit through to kind of hold it vertically you know yeah you kind of familiar yeah is that, what you, is that what you did that's what <laughs> there you, you go yeah yeah, yeah. So that, then, that's kind of the cheap you know quick and easy way to yeah. do it and uh looking back i probably would have and had a better time with that than the stupid little drill guide that I used. Um, um, we, we have another one from Kevin here. Look on the screen there, Jesse. See that? What's up, Kev? Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at that. Fancy with all these feature, like, hey? professional uh, comments and yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what spacing did you use, Nathan? I, I believe, uh, I think you used 10 inches and you told me when I was trying to determine eight inches. Yeah. I think I, I might have even done twelve, and and I definitely would have. Uh, yeah, mine's now, definitely. Now I look 10. back, um, eight inches would probably be. You know, it's kind of like the more dog holes, the better. But you obviously don't want your bench to look like a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> yeah. So, so or, or a colander for just all the like. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you want you know to add as many holes as possible while maintaining some sort of aesthetic. Right. You know that's you know, pretty good. So yeah, like I, I, you could go as small as six inches. I don't think I would need any more holes than a six inch space, but yeah, two rows on either side of the, the little divider. Um, and yeah, eight inch, I think would be, would suit most of your, your needs. To give a reason why we went eight inches to the, to the people listening. And so I'm going to put these, these are directly in the holes on my bench in front of me right now. So do you see how these cr crisscross a little bit? Yeah. When Jesse did his 12, I think he had an issue where he, they were not being able to overlap. If I remember correctly, I think that's what you told me is you had an issue where they couldn't crisscross. So say you were working on like a solid piece or something yeah, it was just a little, a little unusual. Yeah, certain certain reasons. times, certain times I've just been like, you know, when you're working a smaller piece, you know, you're reaching from one dog hole and you're reaching from the other, and you're just like, I just wish I had a little space in between where I could put a, a one of the dogs in, and then, you know, so it's just kind of giving you more clamping options, especially with like smaller, awkward shape pieces where you're just like. You know, you're just like an inch away with your dog and you're like, oh, if only the hole was a little bit closer yeah. to the other set, right? So, yeah. And even at eight, eight inches, I've come across issues where I'm like, oh, I could use another hole like right there or be do you, just a little Do you bit have closer. that little threaded cam lock dog from Veritas? Uh, yes. That right thing here. is awesome. That thing yes. is awesome. And that's basically 
this unit here is kind of the time that where I wish the spacing was a little bit closer. Oh, you got of, that. I got the, the quick release one. It's oh, a bit the, different oh, than that. I don't have that one. So this one, this one screws. Yeah. The problem is, is the distance from I'm trying to get from here to here doesn't reach both holes. Yeah. So it's like, I have to put a spacer block, a little in block there, in, which and isn't I think a, you're, you're going to run into stuff like that. All, and I think no it's matter, no matter what. what. Yeah. But I do, as far as the Veritas uh, pieces, this here is my favorite. The, you dig that? I dig it. The reason for it is so quiet, so I don't get screwed uh, up by my yes, wife. Yes, you're, yes. you're in a detached shed or garage, so mine's attached to like our house, so anything I hammer on vibrates through the walls. So the wife says, stop hammering at 11. Yeah, yeah. I've got no sound issues, but... Yeah. Uh, so I just thought of something. Um, whenever I do my bench 2.0, I have made an upgrade, uh, that I've decided I wanted to do is because I don't use the tail vice near as much, mostly because my motorcycle's in the way is I want to put a, uh, a wagon vice, I think is what they call it. Uh, so the ones that just sit on the ends and, in basically for I think more about like hand planing long boards and stuff where it uses yeah. the square holes or whatever. I want to put one of those on the end. Cause I feel like I would use that a lot more than the That's actual... the one that kind of has like, that's built into the bench yeah. kind of like that. And yeah. it has a little piston that goes in and out yeah. and you so, can draw boards through. Exactly. Yeah. It's actually basically like, like this that at yeah. the end with a giant yeah. wheel. So it's pushing to add pressure to your workpiece and then yeah. utilizing the dog holes as your stop locks along the bench. I, I have decided that like I've had so many cases where I'm like, man, if I had that, this would be so much easier. Yeah. yeah I like that. And um, I also, I would like the idea of using, you know, the sliding, <laughs> using the sliding dead man. Yes. <laughs> I, it's a really good beer. Larry, it's not a beer. It's Pepsi. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> this is not a product placement. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Grab the black spray paint. I think somebody in our group uh, is going to be using the bench crafted leg vice and okay. mounting it in the sliding dead man because I kind of had that idea um, after I built it or, or on the other side of my bench because I actually work on the opposite side of my bench where there's no okay. vice a lot of okay. the time just because, I don't know, I'm too lazy to spin my <laughs> bench around and that's the best for exposure with all the videos and stuff because yeah. I have big windows on the opposite side that over expose everything right. um but i thought man it would be cool to put a slide a, a leg vice in the sliding dead man that way you could you could move the, yeah. the leg vice along the length of the bench and which that's you know, actually a really good idea because i do plan on using bench crafted uh hardware on my next bench was i really liked the tail bikes so basically my bench 2.0 is if we're currently staying in our current house and we don't end up moving, or even if we do, I basically have like two shops is one is in my basement for my finishing room slash like lumber storage slash everything else. And then upstairs in the garage is where my power tools are. So my dream was to have my daughter's bench in the basement as a hand tool only. So like oh, yeah. say it's like dead, hot here and humid i don't it gets hard to work out in our sh my shop sometimes just because of our pa humidity and heat yeah. and everything and i work outside as a lineman all day so it's like come home from being Whoa. outside and then wanting to come sit in your garage and, and when it's been baked in the heat with the garage door and everything so it just doesn't sound pleasant I, so, I don't know i honestly don't know how people even even do it. i went to washington dc in the summertime i don't yeah. it was like for like three days and walking around like the Washington oh, mall. I was like, I, I'm never, I'm never coming back here. Ever, it's, ever. it's a different <laughs> like, atmosphere. It's, if you're not, it's used not to that it, bad. You get used to it. It I would be to it. absolute worst. <laughs> I lived in Pennsylvania. Yeah. For just like almost a year and, and, tricky and oh God. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it's like, it's like only 70 degrees and you're drenched in sweat. <laughs> oh, it was yeah. so, so bad. Like we have no humidity in the summertime. It's just like a, a nice cool breeze and like, 25 to 20 to 30 degrees celsius yeah. in the summer which is like 
you know, 75 70, to 80, 80, you know, 70 to 80 degrees. So it's like perfect temperature, yeah. always a little bit of a breeze because we're on the ocean, no humidity. Like it's just, yeah. It's, uh, I could not do the. My the buddy Cody thing, yeah. tells me about how his shop is outside. So he had his, his samurai bench outside for that whole time before it burnt up. Maybe that's why I burned up was because it was outside. Um, yeah. But he, uh, his outdoor workshop, he was like, yeah, we don't have humidity. So rust really isn't an issue. And yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no, it's outside. It's going to get rusted. Everything is going to rust. But he was just explaining to me like how the humidity is so much different from where I'm at to where you guys are. Yeah. People talk about their tools and stuff rusting. And I'm like, <laughs> Here you have to like you know spritz water on your yeah. tools and leave it for like a night or two to get the rust. Yes, anything. Because my tools, like I just leave them all in my shop. I don't yeah. put anything on them, even the oils from my hands. I guess there's just enough wow. sawdust in in the air that it you know <laughs> and it creates a, a film of yeah. sawdust that absorbs a little bit of moisture. But we don't. I don't have any nothing with my. I haven't touched my cast iron surfaces unless I put like a you know leave a glue rag or something like a damp rag on them by accident which oh, i've only okay. done a couple of times or like somebody left a water bottle on them one time the condensation mm -hmm. kind of left a ring you know yeah. and then you got to get the wd-40 and some steel wool and kind of yeah. sand it out um, sometimes in the spring here we get it so bad where it's like in in the humidity will hit like overnight so you wake up in the morning not even knowing what outside is yet you open your garage door and it's like a wave and within 20 minutes you're like how come everything is already rusted? It's only been 20 minutes. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> it, and it's like really weird because it's like you're inside, you're in a nice comfortable zone and then just open the door and bam, everything. And you're like, oh, it's only been a couple minutes and I'm drenched. But, yeah, I probably just wouldn't be a woodworker. Yeah. <laughs> if I lived in if funny. I lived in a place like that, I'd just be and like, it's funny oh, how we have so many people <laughs> in the East Coast that are woodworkers. Yeah. You gotta have an air conditioned shop then. Yeah, I don't. I have the heater, but I don't have the uh, yeah. AC unit. Maybe that's, that's why I'm so uh, scorned for my anti <laughs> anti expansion contraction. Yeah. you know, theory yeah, where, you where I'm just like wood does not expand and contract that much here. Like bring it, it to Pennsylvania. <laughs> it doesn't here. Like I'm like I've measured all my tables, all my yeah. furniture. I've never noticed an ounce of wood to movement other than when you take it from your shop, which isn't as you know, warm and dry yeah. into your dry heated house. There's a tiny bit of sh more shrinkage mm -hmm. I've noticed, but like, like a 32nd of an inch max kind of a thing. And I'm like, man, everybody's talking about the wood moving. I'm like, what the heck what are is they this? smoking? Like, I'm like, I've never heard of such <laughs> craziness. Yeah, so I, I'm still skeptical. Like, still I, skeptical. I need to see, I need to see well, some measurements and like, I have I like a, people I, do like I've scientific been... testing to show me a tabletop. <laughs> You know, expand yeah. it more than an eighth of an inch, you know, when the weather changes. I'm like, that sounds ludicrous. To me. I've never had one of my woodworking projects do any of that. Granted, they've only been a few years old at this point, but I did have uh, baby gates when my son was born. I built like just out of pine from Home Depot and stuff. And on both sides, like, so imagine like a square frame. Yeah. And basically it was like routed in like kind of like a loose tenon almost uh so on each side of the frame it's only maybe like two and a half feet long so on both sides i have about a quarter inch that stick out where the inside all just shrunk in and yeah. then just the top pieces that grain orientation went like this they're like out on each ends and over time i'm just like what is going on i know i did this flush i didn't like I know I'm not that much of like a weirdo yeah. to like just not re pay attention to that. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess this is just the Home Depot wood shrinking. Look at this guy <laughs> giving us shit. Jimmy. <laughs> Jim, Jim. Jim is laying into you guys. In the weather channel. Not the weather channel. Dude, uh, I, I'm addressing the issues that people kept telling me my workbench yeah. was going to explode. Yeah. Because I built it with and breadboard. Actually, I built breadboard ends on it, and everyone's like, it's going to crack apart. Oh, God. Oh, you know, and I was just like, oh, uh, what? 
like I have not noticed a single thing with my workbench. And that honestly, that, weather that leads could be... up to the workbench because without yeah. the weather, my trees would have not uh, fallen down, and yes, exactly. I would not have milled them up to have this bench. Perfect. So wait, we have one more question. We're gonna go back to the workbench. Kevin asked this question. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> this one. With the cost of wood being so high right now, Ooh. would you what would you suggest for your best bang for your buck? Uh, I don't know wood? if yeah, like it depends. I think mainly softwoods and like stuff that's be being delivered to these massive stores, like plywood, sheet goods, that sort of stuff Am is going up crazy. Um, not that much. I've been to the hardwood supplier where I am, and it, I'm sure prices have gone up a little bit, but not terribly bad. I always go in there, and I'm just like, you know, what's your cherry at a board foot? And what's, you know, what's your cheapest one? It's usually poplar, all, you know, or western maple, which is big leaf maple, I guess, out there. It's pretty, it's not as hard and, and light as, like, eastern or hard maple. And that's pretty cheap out here, yeah. but I find it moves like a mofo. Like it, I built those French doors out of it a long time ago for my upstairs in my shop, and it's the worst decision I ever made. Like they, the doors expand and contract three eighths of an inch over winter to summer. So in the winter time, I can barely close the door; they're binding, and then in the summertime, there's like three eighths gaps in between the two French doors. Like it's it's ridiculous. So. I would never build another door out of that, um, but I like cherry. I think it, where I am, it's pretty reasonably priced. Um, oak and walnut are ridiculous because I think we get them from out east or in the states, and and bringing them into Canada is just crazy expensive. They're like well over twelve to sixteen dollars a board foot for for like white oak is thirteen. I think it's nuts. Uh, it used to be like eight. Yeah. So you, we see like big jumps all the time. So I always just go in there and I say like, what's stupid expensive right now and what is reasonable still yeah and then i'll just make my decision based off of that yeah awesome. like i can get Sapili, i can get sapili pretty cheap right now it's like maybe a buck more than cherry a board foot then i love the look of it it's just such gorgeous wood it's great to work with so i'm kind of like that's my new exotic favorite um but yeah cherry cherry is a great one for for me and it's affordable so so i have a question for you guys Okay, last question from Nathan, and then we're going to wrap things up. Okay, so it's date night. If, if walnut yeah. is so expensive, how much would a nice figured walnut crotch times two run you guys up there? Ah, Jesse? Well, if you just Including want. Including some curly maple for the rest of the table base. Ooh. So, did you get a deal on this? Is that where this is going? That's what he, no, that's where well, he milled it himself. No, actually, these were given to me by a sawmill this past week. He said, Nathan, I saw your table. Uh, the joinery is awesome. Can you come do this table base for me? I'm doing the top, and I'm running out of time, and I need it done ASAP, and I'm here to save the day. All right. Yeah, like a piece of walnut like that, like you wouldn't even be able to find it unless you went to like one of the more specialty hardwood stores, which basically okay. means you're going to pay – Buku, forty percent more than anywhere else. Right. Um, yeah, like those those little pieces alone would be like at least three hundred, three hundred to four hundred dollars a piece if they have yeah. figure and stuff in them. Like, yeah. so I have four. That's of Canadian them in my, pesos. Or I have so five of them in my basement that were I was saving for my personal stock. So you're basically saying I should like ship them up to you guys to sell. <laughs> <laughs> you should just. That, that could pay for me to get across the border. You could just pack, you. yeah. You could pack them in your truck and take them to Seattle, and I guarantee yeah. you would double your money overnight. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, would, you would make a ton on, especially. That's Walmart. how I'm going to get myself across the borders. So there you go. Because I got the goods. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for for joining us, Jesse. Thanks for jumping in here with Nathan. Nathan, thanks for uh, meeting face to face and joining. I much yeah, appreciate. Man. I, oh, I've awesome. I've listened to you and we've talked many times over the years, but face to face is pretty cool. And someday I have the goal to make it up your way. Oh, no, it's going to be awesome. There'll be opportunity for that you. for sure, yeah. as long as the the governments are playing along. If not, uh, we just have to like I'll smuggle myself in a 
boat. Yeah. Like, we'll do it the like old school fashion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might full well be in crazy mode in another year where people are yeah. just jumping the border. Jumping the border. <laughs> so, awesome. but man, you did an awesome job on that bench. You were probably, I think, one of the first, you were one of the first guys yeah. to, to, bite that off and do it really well and i was like i was pretty blown away and and many have done it since but so we had like three guys four guys all finished it at the same time i think cody moss uh finished it right about the same month i did paul carlson yeah um, uh another gentleman out in uh reading not far from me i can't think of his name off the top of my head uh so there's like four four of us i can think of right at the within like a two month time frame that all finished it and completed at the same time. We all started at different times, but it was cool to kind of help each other and just bounce ideas off each other along with reaching out to you anytime we really s- struggled with something. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think there's too many projects that are like more involved than, than that one this. there. So seeing, some I think guys this is like, is pretty sweet. I've told Adam this in the past is like, there needs to be like a, like a shirt or a sweatshirt that's, says like i've completed the samurai bench like that's exactly. like a whole it that's is. like a whole tier it's like a rite itself. of passage you exactly know? Yeah. it's yeah. like it's like that final essay of your yeah. college your or like your doc <laughs> yeah your doctorate thesis we'll we'll, we'll figure it's something awesome. out we'll yeah. figure something out all right guys we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up i just okay. wanted to quickly thank touch- you everybody that uh came to listen to me talk and <laughs> i've enjoyed sharing my story with you guys and i look forward to everybody else's stories to come awesome so let me just before we go just want to quickly talk about those lives again if you want to get in on the lives we've got uh cam in the bottom left there he's going live tomorrow with his uh or sorry thursday uh inside the makers mob for members only and he's talking about his epoxy uh river table build then chris is going live next thursday talking shop about his new shop that he's built uh, and he's going to kind of talk all about things that he loved that he did, maybe things that he would do differently even. Um, and then, yeah, so if you want to get on that, right now we're giving you uh, 75% off your first month. So $4.95 for your first month. The link is somewhere in the description, <laughs> wherever you are. So uh, there you go. Guys, let's uh, let's say goodbye to these people, these lovely, lovely people who are still here watching. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you soon. Wait, I'm, wait, wait, wait a second. I'm going to do this. No, you can't do Samurai it. I do it. Out. That's mine. Samurai student out. <laughs> <laughs> In the face. <laughs> Wood ninja out. Oh, Wood ninja. Shut up. <laughs> Sen- All right, <laughs> I'm leaving. Sensei, Sensei Samurai out. out. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys. Adios. Logging off. Have a great rest of your evening, everybody. See you guys later.